Hi people, I'm Esplen Craft and I make retro inspired synth pop. This is a receipt from August 1992 where I've paid 15,700 Norwegian kroner for a Korg wave station AD. And in dollars that was about 750 and adjusted for inflation that's about $3,200 today for a Korg wave station AD. And the Korg Wave Station AD is a very interesting synth and a brief um, trip back in history brings us to sequential circuits and when they went belly up in around 1988 they were purchased by Yamaha and the design team with Dave Smith was set to work on uh, enhancing the Prophet VS that was the last synth that Sequential was working on when they went uh, bankrupt. And a little bit later uh, they went on to Korg, which was partly owned by Yamaha at the, at the time. And they came up with the Korg Wave Station in 1990. It was released in 1990 and it was, that, was an instant hit. And in 1991 they released the Korg Wave Station AD and that has a lot going for it. Do you want advanced vector synthesis? Do you want a joystick to control the motion of the vector synthesis? How about dual effects processors? How about wave sequencing? How about analog inputs? Do you want stereo vocoding? The wave station has got it all. And now that Korg has announced the new wave state, I thought it only fitting to demonstrate the original and still the best wave station you can get in my opinion. So come along with me and I'll show you some of what it can do. So now I'm going to send that demo song into the inputs of the wave station, set the patch to stereo vocoder, and now I can play that sound. And the demo song is being vocoded. 
by the patch and the stereo vocoder effects. But as you heard, some of the original demo track bled through the inputs. So I'm going to change the patch somewhat. So instead of the string patch as an oscillator, I'm going to use the VS and external inputs. Now I have waves from the VS and I'm going to mute the inputs so I'll hear only the waves being vocoded by the demo song. A wave sequence is simply a list which allows an oscillator to play specific PCM waves in succession. And the Wave Police patch is perfect to demonstrate this. And by using the Vector Position Joystick, I can mix the four oscillators A, B, C and D on the fly. center the joystick, the oscillators are mixed equally. So how do we build up sound in a wave station? Well, it all starts with a performance. And the performances are the highest level of sound control in the wave station. And a performance can consist of up to eight parts. And all parts are built up the same way, and it's the parts that hold the patches. So part one holds a patch, and it's the patch that makes the sound. So let's have a look at what a patch is. A patch can have one, two, or four voices, and patches rely on the PCM waves played by their oscillators. And each of the maximum four voices within a patch has its own set of synthesizers, if you, if you like, like oscillators, filters, amplifier, envelopes, LFOs, etc. And as you can see, this is just a voice patch within a part, and uh, you can have up to eight parts in the performance, like I told you, and this way you can pick up big, complex sounds in the wave station. And so what about a wave sequence? Well, a wave sequence is simply just a list which allows an oscillator to play specific PCM waves in succession. And each step of the sequence can be given a specific duration or be controlled by gate time during which a key is held down on the keyboard, for instance. And the wave sequences can be crossfaded and smoothed together. And so how do we do this on the wave station itself? Well, I'm going to go through some of the menus and show you where things are at and how you can access different parameters at the wave station through the membrane buttons and the display. So let's take a classic patch like the Cosmic Zone and see how that's built up. So we start by pressing the edit button and now you can see how many parts this performance are built up of. And you can see two different parts with the patches deep waves in both parts one and two. The rest of the parts are empty. So if I press the detail button, you can see we have access to things like levels, Exposed, delays, play mode, polyphonic, which FX bus the sound is going through, and these are global parameters for that patch. Let's go into the patch itself, and you can see the structure. It's a one oscillator patch. And remember, you could have up to four oscillators within the patch. So I press the macro button, and it's in here I can change things like filter with a, with a cutoff, and things like the amplifier and set the envelopes for, uh, for a short attack, a long attack, uh, things like that. Pressing the exit button always takes us one step back in the menu system. So let's check out the one oscillator patch and pressing waves takes us to the, the menu where we can actually select the different waveforms, the waves that build up uh, the oscillator. And you have plenty of those, the different wave station models expanded on, on the number of shear waves you could use within an oscillator, a patch. But it's also possible to use waveforms 
from the PCM cards, and back in the day it was um, highly common to buy extra waveforms uh, on those PCM cards to use in building up sounds on the wave station and the M1 and the D50 and things like that. By pressing the button wave sequence, it takes me into the menu where I can actually start uh, assembling different waves and set up durations and things like that for making a sound from wave sequencing. Very cool and very fun. The structure, one oscillator, two oscillators or four oscillators, you can hard sync those as well. And here we have two different waves building up the oscillator. Setting it to four. Now it's starting to get complicated within this single patch. Luckily, I can mute each A, B, C, and D uh, waves to, uh, to test out different sound configurations. Once you've learned this uh, navigation routine, it's pretty easy to navigate in the wave station, actually. By pressing the effects button, I get access to the two effect units within the wave station. I can set these up in series or parallel, and you have the whole range of different effects available, including the stereo vocoder, which you heard previously. The effects do sound uh, like it's from the early 90s, slightly digital cold to the effects themselves, but I like them and it's part of the, uh, of the wave station sound. By pressing global, you have some global things like memory protect and uh, pitch bend ranges, etc, etc. Pressing the analog button takes you into where you can actually uh, enable the analog ins at the back of the wave station itself for it to be used as a vocoder or an effects unit all on its own. If you want a nice digital effects unit, this is also something you get within the wave station. So let me play you some of my favorite sounds from the wave station. These are 15 of the sounds I like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, I've only just touched the surface of the wave station. If I were to make a tutorial on how to use every aspect of it, this video or videos would last for hours and I'd probably bore you with the such long videos. But suffice to say, this is a machine that was very influential in its time. This was state of the art in 1990 and Keyboard Magazine awarded it with the best hardware innovation of the year. If you had a Mac Quadra 7 or 800, the startup tone, the startup sound of those Macs were made on a Korg value station, the EX, the first one, and with a patch called Sandman. That's a modified preset you're hearing in the startup sound of the Mac Quadra 7 and 800 series of computers. So I hope you enjoy this little brief introduction into the world of the Korg wave station. And if you find one for a decent price, don't hesitate to pick it up. As always, I'm Espen Croft. I am the 80s. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.